Hey all here OS Reviews, you're watching our hands-on review of the Apemen M4. This is a Pico DLP pocket projector that sells for around 180 bucks, and it's one of the most portable units I've seen in terms of size, at least for the native 480p resolution. It supports up to Full HD content using a standard HDMI port, and this particular model also comes with a built-in tripod, it's a mini tripod that you can use. The battery life in here will last for about two hours, two and a half hours hours on a single charge and can even be used as a power bank. So in the box you have the mini projector itself which we'll take a closer look at in a second. We can see immediately though there is a very reflective surface which is made out of this uh, shiny plastic and then the trim of the unit is constructed out of an aluminum uh, body so it does feel quite sturdy and premium. Very similar size in fact to a small Android TV box such as the Xiaomi Mi Box. Then there's a standard power supply that takes a regular USB lead, followed by the aforementioned mini tripod, which you get as a bonus. There's also a bonus full-sized HDMI cable that you get to connect to computers, DVD players. Uh, it's a nice little accessory that you see here. And there's also the micro USB cable, which is used for charging the battery of the mini projector. Now, one accessory that is notably missing in the box is a remote control, which majority of other mini projectors we've seen have, but it does mean that this has built-in keys that you can use to navigate the UI, do things like adjust the volume, select things, and turn on and off directly. But I would have still liked to see the remote as a secondary option, uh, but again, that's not something that we find here. There's a built-in speaker, and on the rear here, there's also a built-in fan that kind of prevents the unit from overheating. Again, very slim. Here we have the lens. In terms of the lumens output, it's around 100 lumens or so, which is average as far as many Pico projectors are concerned. One thing that this is lacking, though, is a lens cover, so it's going to be kind of fully revealed. There is no slot or mechanism to close it up. On the side here, though, there is a focus dial that you can use to adjust the kind of focus depending on how far away you are from the wall. It can project up to 100 inches, and there's the second speaker, so it is a stereo speaker. And then on the other side, there's a standard 3.5mm headphone jack, USB port, the full-size HDMI port, micro USB for charging, it can also be charged and powered on at the same time if you have it always plugged in. And then on the rear, there's a standard tripod mount and additional ventilation ports. One thing I will say, though, is that this is not a smart projector. So it doesn't have, say, an Android OS built on in. So there is no kind of mirror cast functionality on this unit. You have to rely on the HDMI to do that. But you can just uh, connect it using Type-C to most smartphones that support OTG output and it will still work. Overall though, it is a very beautiful design and it's indeed one of the smallest uh, projectors I've seen. Also here it is next to a smartphone, you can see that the size is actually not that much bigger to take with you when on the go. The only thing about the front cover here is it's a little bit of a fingerprint magnet, so it does attract smudges a little more easily than I would like, but the construction quality overall is still very solid. So next let's turn it on and take a closer look at its performance. Right now we have a virtual screen size of around 80 inches or so, and we actually have some light on in the background of this room, but you can still make out the image without too many problems. Additionally, we are pretty much right next to the projector right now, and it's still very quiet. The hum and the background noise is definitely lower than say a full-scale home entertainment projector, so it's not going to distract from the experience of the movie. And in this first test, we're taking a look at web pages, so things like uh, the Verge, which includes finer text and smaller details, uh, and you can see here it's still doing a decent job, um, actually. Uh, there is a bit more pixelation here with fine text and tiny little um, text that's running across, so this is still not going to be a replacement for a true, I would say, business class projector. Typically, if you're giving, say, a presentation or, or if you're looking at tiny little Excel uh, words and numbers, then that's one area where, say, 480p native resolution is perhaps not going to be the best choice in the world, but it's still adequate. It's just kind of zooming in, and we see that the text is also a bit more legible. Colors themselves are also quite good in terms of being pretty natural um, and not too off in terms of the white balance. Uh, it's decently saturated, perhaps not super vibrant compared to a uh, OLED display or something like that, but for a projector, it's more than 
uh, usable. So here we have a clip from YouTube playing back and it's at full HD resolution and again is pretty enjoyable especially if you're viewing the content from afar in a dimmed room it's giving you a very cinematic experience. Um, you can project it onto the ceiling, onto the wall and just kind of relax and recline in a couch or in bed. Um, it's going to provide you with a pretty relaxing video watching experience and can also get you a larger virtual screen size than traditional TVs for selling around the same price. Again, as you can see here, definitely very usable for watching back sci-fi films, action films, YouTube clips, so on and so forth. Additional footage which have a darker contrast to them, but you can see that it still is uh, pretty enjoyable as far as the blacks, um, you know, not having uh, too big of an issue in terms of contrasting with a the other elements in the shot, it still gives a sufficient detail. So if you're watching back kind of thrillers or detective films, oftentimes they're shot in a darker room or environment, it's still perfectly legible and enjoyable. Colors are quite vivid and pretty. Because the projection is against a wall, it's actually slightly healthier for your eyes as well than staring directly into the pixels of a traditional TV. So it can kind of relax things, get things further away from your head, uh, which is good, and also a good choice if you are perhaps tight on physical space. We're going to also navigate to do a quick sample of what the audio quality is like using the stereo speakers next. So turning things down, the takeaway is the built-in speaker quality is very above average as far as mini projectors are concerned. In fact, there's even a little bit of bass and kick to the thump of the drum beats here, which is impressive considering how small the speakers seem. But they actually don't really distort, even at higher volumes. It still sounds pretty clean, doesn't really screech or become too shrill, so uh, quite impressive there. Gets plenty loud if you crank up the volume definitely is good enough for the purposes of watching back some quick YouTube clips with, and for sure better than, I would say, 70% of the other mini projectors that we've reviewed thus far. Only thing I will say, though, is this does not seem to have any additional advanced settings that I could find, even with tapping on some of the other keys and controls. It seems like it's just for volume, uh, which is a little bit strange. That means that you can't do things like adjust a keystone digitally, so if you want to do the tilt, you have to use the tripod to change kind of the adjustments for the Kind of tilt and orientation. Final feature, which is that power bank is indeed functional. Maybe a tablet here, you can see that it will begin charging shortly. Granted, it's not going to be rapid charging, but it does work. And uh, if you are in an emergency, you can definitely use it uh, if this is in your bag. So that's more or less it for our hands-on review of the Apemen M4 Mini DLP Pico Projector. Overall, I think it actually has better performance than you'd expect considering the really tiny size and looking at the specs alone for the native res. It actually is quite vibrant and bright, and it's super simple and straightforward to set up. Again, primarily emphasizing that portability, this is definitely an option to take a closer look at. You can check out more details if interested in the links down below, but for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Apemen M4.